Aloha. Thank you for tuning in with me. Today we're going to talk a little bit about magic, a little bit about mystery, specifically focused on Quetzalcoatl, feathered serpent deity of Mesoamerica. The Aztecs knew him as Quetzalcoatl. The Mayans knew him as Kukulkan. Who is he? What is he? Why am I the one talking about him? Why do I want to share this with you? I'm here in Tepoztlan, Mexico, which is known as the birthplace of Quetzalcoatl. Throughout the last about 10 years, I've had significant experiences around this particular energy that I feel are very pertinent to these times, very pertinent to our own individual experiences and our collective experience, as well as the evolution of this planet and where we're going. Quetzalcoatl lives in each and every single one of us. This is the magic and the mystery that I believe the ancestors were doing their best to share with us through story and through pictograph so that we could each access Quetzalcoatl in our own beings, our own divine self. In previous videos that I've posted, I talked about the Kundalini energy and the Kundalini serpent, this serpentine energy that lives at the base of our spine and it comes up, you know, rises through the chakras and up the spine and is a vehicle for enlightenment and activation of the self. The wings are an extension of our energetic being, an extension really of our arms. In many Mayan drawings and carvings and paintings, they share the image of a mushroom. Sometimes it's on the head of a, of a being, sometimes it's near a group of people. And through investigation, um, certain people have believed that the, the Mayan had a very, very, very specific, specific ceremony where they would fast uh, for a certain amount of time. And w when the sun would set, they would eat these mushrooms, uh, which Mexico is full of magical, magical mushrooms. They would eat the mushrooms and they would begin to dance. And when they began to dance, their spine would light up, right? From the sacrum, it would start to move and vibrate and shake. And this serpentine energy would actually rise up the spine. The spine would become alive and dancing. And as this happened, the wings, your arms would start to, to, to shake and to flap. And you would embody the feathered serpent. You would embody Quetzalcoatl. You would become Quetzalcoatl. Now, I'm not recommending anyone goes out and eats a bunch of mushrooms on a fasted stomach and dances at the sunset. I've tried it. It's not 100% recommendable unless you really, really do your preparation before. And so uh, whatever you choose to do um, in your own practice, I really have found positive results in my own self when I <clears throat> focus on the spine when I bring a lot of movement and flexibility to my spine and a lot of energy to my spine through breath. I do believe that if you're open and you're clear, this energy will come alive and you will embody Quetzalcoatl. You will become Quetzalcoatl. And I do believe that this is in our potential as individuals and humans to embody this feathered serpent energy. I do believe this is our destiny as a collective race is to tap into our own individual creative force, our own individual infinite nature and embody Quetzalcoatl. I really truly believe you can do it, I can do it, we can all do it. <laughs> and perhaps a long time ago, there was a man or men or women that did embody this and they did tap into some sort of Akashic record some kind of network matrix where they were able to gather information and bring it down onto this earthly plane and share it with beings. So there's all kinds of stories about how Quetzalcoatl started in the, in the Pacific and sailed through the Hawaiian Islands and shared 
his or her knowledge there and then made his way down through Mexico. I'm not entirely sure. I've also heard stories that Atlantis, uh, at the fall of Atlantis, you know, the, the priesthood split and half went to Egypt and half went to Mexico. And that's where you see this sort of split of pyramids. And, you know, in this sort of split, uh, enlightenment was reached and the birth of this energy of Quetzalcoatl was, was prevalent here in Mexico. Again, I can't confirm any of these stories, but I can confirm to you that the energy of Quetzalcoatl exists because I've tapped into it myself. I've become the feathered serpent. I've not been able to sustain that energy, but I have become that feathered serpent. And I will share with you in my next video my experience of when I became the feathered serpent on December 21st of 2012. Thank you for tuning in. Peace out. Share more with you next time.